This couch is more than adequate. This is a great couch. Yeah, this is fantastic. TV is great too. I agree. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 4, Episode 2. Yeah, this is a season where we're more specifically playing Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you're going to play along with us this season, there's mm-hmm. an awesome Materia Lockdown Challenge that's being run by the RPG Golden Years podcast. Mm-hmm. And the way it works is like you tweet at their Twitter bot, which will assign your characters different like materials that they can only use. And it's a nice challenge to make FF7 harder than it needed to be. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like an artificial job system for FF7. Like if you want to play through it. It's all for a charity for the Motor Neuron Disease Association. So it's for a good cause. Go if you're playing along and you want a little extra challenge, go do that and, and donate for the MNDA. Yeah, we should be clear. The donation is separate, but they're doing it as a drive and right. there's you can participate without that but like we encourage you to go and donate yeah so what's check the that twitter out. handle yeah they go to go to materialockdown.com or go to the rpg golden years podcast or they're the at ff7 mld account on twitter so mm-hmm. go check them out and with that let's get on with the show yeah where we left off we've met eris yeah we uh we met her pers- her constant stalkers the turks yep um we're on our way back to her house yeah, I think we're about to go back to her house to play a game of try and leave in the middle of the night, from what I remember. Yeah, that's coming um, up. But yeah, we're going to we're gonna go to her house, the most lovely location of all of Midgar by far. One of the S- Sector 5 slums, I think, is where she lives. <laughs> yeah, I think you so. Know, good, for, good on you for remembering that. <laughs> is where Tifa is. Okay, that's an easy way to remember it. Tifa's seventh heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then... Fifth edition. The fifth edition. <laughs> the fifth, fifth edition Eris. <laughs> Eris. Last episode ended at the end of a night. The end of the first night at the cabin. Right. So we're going to wake up and go like, ah, oh, fuck, we need to eat something. So we go grocery shopping. So mm-hmm. that's the first chunk of this episode. Before we get to picking up where we left off, all the shit that we just described, we're going to go grocery shopping. It'll take us some time to get up to steam, but don't worry, once we have groceries... Look, if you were on this vacation, you would need to groceries too, so you're coming with us. Yeah, I like how we're getting defensive already. (laughs) Anyway, for better or worse, we recorded going to the grocery store, um... And you know what? We're not going to just sacrifice potential episodes arbitrarily. (laughs) So we're going to the grocery store, and that's that. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. car. Let's go. (laughs) I'm ready to just take the morning leisurely. Like, I'm in no rush, but we just got to get everything we need to just be able to sit down and play. Yeah, so we should probably make a list of like stuff the we're going to need for things. I think it's going to be hard to actually think of every like a lot of what we're going to want, I think. We're going to come up with just as we see it. Well, cuz it's like <laughs> we've talked about sloppy joes for example. Like I think we're going to want to get a lot of ground beef. My f- fucked up head. I'm like, <laughs> you're not going to want a list cuz then all the possibilities are gone. I don't think you realize like this is the philosophy of the entire show where it's like don't go in with plans, find out what it is afterward. And when you're there in the moment, yeah, this is this is like how I do everything, even my grocery shopping. <laughs> I literally go to the store with a general idea yeah. of the you, area. We're I'd gonna like record to eat it in. all, and eventually there will be food. I mean, in my actual life, I go, I do this, right. and then I always get home, and I'm like, ah, I should have made a list. I don't have any salt because <laughs> <laughs> the possibility of salt isn't exciting. You need to put it on the list anyway. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that in the store. And go salt, salt. What could I do with that? <laughs> We're gonna want to get onions and yeah. stuff, you know, all that good stuff. But like that, I know that Sloppy Joe's requires like ketchup and brown sugar, right? Brown sugar isn't that. I think so. I don't know. I think you can make your filling in many ways. You know, it's like the classic would be like a ketchupy, brown sugary thing. But it's like if we ended up making a bunch of chili or whatever like whatever leftover meat sauce shit we have can probably go on a bun yeah (laughs) all right i don't know yeah i don't know that's the thing i'm very bad at lists it's hard for me to conceive of we gotta get a bunch of like eggs yeah like let's just get everything from the supermarket let's just like put everything on the list put all of it on the list i can't promise that i'm not going to need to go to the bathroom at some point i don't know what's going on I think it was all those beans. 
Yeah, at the end of the night, I was having some really bad acid reflux, just like I ate two bowls of beans. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Final Fantasy has stunted my planning skills. I'm like, well, we'll just go on the road until we get to the store. Right, and then there will be a guy who will be selling potions and everything we need. Nice home. Proceed to the route. We are. We're proceeding to the route. Proceed to the route. <laughs> I'm doing it. Turn what if that was in Final Fantasy? <laughs> Proceed to the route. I'm doing a side quest. <laughs> Proceed to the route. Yeah, I feel like we played like the not even all of the uh what do you call oh, that yeah, chapter like, before we're not even through before like before the, the first chapter. Yeah, no, it's prologue. Prologue. We're not even through that. No. But I was just thinking about it this morning. I was like, already the... Left? Yeah, take a left. The uh, level of complication in the characters, even though we've seen nothing, is like... It's like yeah. Cloud is collapsing, and there's weird voices, and there's flashbacks <laughs> to a past that's not clear. I was thinking about, like, <laughs> what I know. We blew up a reactor, and we're setting up who all these characters are. Yeah. And it's like, I'm getting a sense of who they are, and that, like, they're a team of, like, rebels and terrorists. I just had the revelation that my childhood heroes are fucking terrorists. <laughs> yeah, if you really <laughs> loved all these characters. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. There's some really nice homes in this area. Oh, yes. Yeah, why can't they straighten out their fucking roads, though? <laughs> That's one curvy mile. Voluptuous mile. Uh, oh, man, it's so coffee. piney up here. Oh, that might have actually been the turn, but this thing doesn't know that. Yeah, we want to get down to there. Sorry. Okay. Let's get some zucchinis. Yeah, we'll get some vegetables that are good for general recipes. Right. Onions. Um, maybe potatoes. Peppers. I think we're done over here. Yeah, I do too. I also want to get one of the I don't really want to deal with it. Every time I get one, I then feel like it's a responsibility that I'm like, I guess I'll make guacamole. I don't really want it right now. Sometimes it's great. All right, I think that'll do it. Thank you very much. I got ketchup. You got ketchup? Cool. Did you get anything else like mustard or anything? Like no, I got eggs, I got cheese. Should we get like burger buns? Yeah. Like a bowl full of olives. No. I'm hungry. We have so much yeah, I know. Now. I know. <laughs> well, we did that that great mistake that only has the greatness where you go to the grocery store when you're starving. What it ends in is me making scrambled eggs for myself as fast as possible, and <laughs> nothing else. Because <laughs> I'm so fucking hungry. <laughs> We've got a lot more than frozen pizza and beans now. Yeah. We have more beans, though. We at least have more beans. So we've got a bunch of shit. I mean, what's on the menu, Ryan? Well, we have stuff for Sloppy Joes. We do have that, or potentially tacos. And then also, I think there was bacon and eggs. You know, come to think of it, I think we bought basically ground beef and hamburger buns. (laughs) All of the stuff we were talking about that we could cook other than Sloppy Joes and beer canned chicken is not on the menu. I think we got some some frozen <laughs> pigs in a blanket. Oh yeah, we did, and two corn dogs. <laughs> yeah, the corn dogs. <laughs> There's like a crispness to the, to the air. A crispness to the air, and a spring in everyone's step, mm-hmm. as two men set out on a journey to complete Final Fantasy VII, a game that broke boundaries when it came out. Will it continue to break boundaries after all these today. years, yes. Or will it break those men? Oh, it breaks something. It it broke me, eventually. <laughs> what can we make with all this food we bought? I didn't have any particular recipe in mind. We bought a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do a thing to a steak. Oh, shit, we got those frozen pigs in a blanket. I'm fucking excited about that. Now, let's make some of those right now. I would have that for breakfast. Yeah, me too. Turn right onto Golf Course Lane, then your destination will be on the left. Yeah, they made it easy. It's Golf Course Road and then Golf Course Lane, and then there, I saw over there was Golf Course Drive. <laughs> and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Just all Golf Course, yeah. Your destination is on the left. 
Yeah, no, it's Golf Course Way. <laughs> the fuck? God, fuck. Do it all. Everything will be named Golf Course. Welcome to the woods. There's no thing in Final Fantasy where they, like, get into an area <laughs> and, like, their allergies, allergies start acting up. I don't think so. Not no. that I've seen, but that would be a nice touch. Well, you're no, right. I, I never... I, it's, I, but it's also, you know, it's like... Yeah. It's 12. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Haley. I don't know if you guys could hear that little bleh sound effect in the background, but that was Haley throwing up. Yeah, the altitude's getting to everybody. Haley, not more. Haley, over here. Outside. Okay. What was that all about? Uh, anyway. <sighs> I just want to make it clear, she was fine. Yeah. The dog was fine. She just had to get a little bit of that a little bit of that puke out. Sometimes you puke just for fun. Should we just make like a big mess of scrambled eggs? Fuck yeah. A whole big mess of it. A big mess of scrambled eggs and things in a blanket. It's gonna be great. I can't wait to spend the rest of this day in this environment <laughs> playing a fucking shit ton of Final Fantasy. We finished <laughs> editing season three. Yeah, we're still three like, days we're just ago. Been watching that. It's hard I'm to even so, think of this as the same anything. That's the thing. It's like, <laughs> that's where I'm at, is I'm like, this is so different. I feel like I'm now ready to, like, orient myself and actually actually look at it. You need a baking sheet. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oiling up the pan? Well, it said to use parchment paper, which we don't have, so... Oh, shit. I never seen a frozen thing that didn't make it like super crazy easy well, for you. What I didn't realize is these like aren't even cooked yet. Like the dough is the going dough to is, rise. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hey, get down from there. How do these frozen foods that seem to have not been updated since they were invented in like the 40s and 50s survive? Like, I don't know. You buy a box of frozen items, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the back is not like put it in the oven or microwave. It's like get out your parchment paper, be sure to have a cheesecloth ready. Yeah. And then like ba and like there's like preparation steps almost. You know, I think I it's like almost like they were left in originally to like make people who are like, well, I do it all from scratch right, feel like right. they had step. I, like, why do I need parchment? parchment paper for pigs in a blanket. I do think that like better frozen foods are like more separated and that you need like more like the Trader Joe's frozen pizza also has like a thing that you drizzle on top and like different like stages. Well, yeah, I mean, to there's a the toaster <laughs> strudel is like nicer than a pop tart because it comes with a drizzle, right? right. But like I'm talking about like these pigs in a blanket were not like the nicer pigs in a no, blanket. No, they <laughs> these were the crappier they, ones. And they required for sure. parchment paper. Anyway, this is not important, but what are you gonna do with that onion? I was gonna cook up some onions and peppers. Oh yes. And mix it in with the eggs. Do that, please. Yes, do that. Yeah. Can I help in any way? Eh, I'm good. We gotta wait for 20 minutes before the pigs in the blankets are ready anyway. Man, we're on lake time, Ryan. We're on lake time, motherfucker. <laughs> See, she had to throw up to get her appetite back. You know how it is. Oh, I've been there. I couldn't possibly eat another bite. Well, hold on a sec. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat outside? Yeah. Fuck yeah. See if I can start setting some plates and shit. Dude, it's so fucking nice out. It's ridiculous how nice out it is. We should give some jam for the toast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, those eggs are perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Nailed it. I'm getting very, very close to ready to press and play on this whole situation. Oh, it's so quiet. Okay. Shall we? Yeah, are you ready? I'm, I'm about ready. Let's, let's clean up a little bit and, uh, and, and get this thing up and running. So that was the morning of day two. Mm hmm and uh, we're ready to get back into this game finally. And then it's going to be a long play session, so we're not yeah, going back to the grocery store for a while. Don't worry, we don't eat again for way too long. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> the game begins. <laughs> Let's do this. Day two. Feel good. Feel ready. This place feels right. I'm going to continue. I press circle the first time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Huh? You're ready to go. I'm ready to play this game. Okay, yeah, we were 
We were going left, I think. Yeah, we were, but because we're about to meet up with Eris back at her base. She, we're bodyguarding her back to her house. Right. Because those the Turks showed up. The Turks. How old or young are the Turks? They seem pretty... He looked are pretty they elderly hip. Turks? No, he looked... They're young? He looked pretty hip, yeah. Oh, shit. The hip Turks. That's what they should have called themselves. So on our way to Eris' house, in town there's a guy in a pipe. Yeah, and there's a guy standing outside of the pipe who has, like, a severe misunderstanding of what it means to be, like, terminally ill. <laughs> like, the guy, the guy in the pipe, as you will see, is obviously there's something really wrong with him, and this guy's like, yeah, that guy's weird. Yeah. <laughs> that guy in the pipe's a weird one. No matter what you ask him, he only answers, uh, or ah. Uh. Hmm. But maybe if we got, like, a stone tablet, his uhs and ahs would be returned. <laughs> yeah, we probably got to find the Rosetta Stone for the guy in the pipe, it's right? It's probably, he's learned. speaking another language. This guy are sick. <laughs> this guy are sick. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Put my shoes outside. You got to air out the shoes? Yeah. He passed out nearby and someone must have helped him here. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. Those shoes walking by do leave, a, leave an aroma. Yeah, I was smelling them from here and was like, oh, those gotta go. This guy are sick. This guy are sick. I mean, sick. it looks like he's got a sweet setup. It looks like he's got <laughs> one hell of a man cave. Yeah, on. look at how much... <laughs> yeah, this guy, I think, found the dark book of the no one can know about this lifestyle. This guy's definitely rocking the no cat <laughs> <laughs> lifestyle. He lives in, like, a room that's basically just a can with a TV in it with the bed just in front of the TV. You'd lie and just crane your neck, and you'd stare at the TV even though your neck is breaking looking at it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. We could be playing this game in that space, like, that, that, yeah, that's a lot like how I normally live. Like I did all through college. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, yeah, it's not not nice in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also he's got a bunch of trophies on his shelf. Yeah, so at one time or another... This Life guy, was good. This guy was a real winner. Yeah. He won like a rocket thing and then, you know, just for a bunch of first places. Listen, I'm no doctor. Mm. No, I, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> I don't know why I asked you here to do this. Eris is like, Cloud, you said you did a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, no joke. He's like, why did you bring me in here? Hey, that man has a tattoo. I think it was the number two. Oh boy, he's got a shit tattoo. <laughs> Try to remember the numbered tattoos. Yeah, another thing to point out about this is how nuts is it that this is not like a secret side quest? It's ridiculous. We actually spend the next like two episodes convinced that it is a secret Th side quest. There's no way to help this sick guy. And also, it's indicating an element of story. So it is, and, and which is is fair because this does come back up later. It right. ties into the story. But not in the it, way you'd think. It has all of the hallmarks of like there's a secret here. Right. Like it's totally got if you all can those red flags. Make this guy not sick. Then with maybe some kind of medicine for sick people. I don't know. And maybe Where would maybe you get we're something gonna get, like that. Maybe there is a place. I don't know. We're maybe gonna find out. Maybe there's a pharmacy in town. Well, I'm no doctor, but this I could probably sick, get this guy like some aspirin or something. He also is he missing a trophy or is that his duct tape trophy? I, yeah, I don't know. His trophy of duct tape. <laughs> He's got some books. This guy's got the setup here in this pipe. He's a college student, probably. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm walking around, looking at the ground. That's what this NPC They really came say. up with great dialogue for all these people. Look at how much what text we can fit on the CD. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you can talk to everyone in the world. You find a lot of things people drop when you look down. You never find them when you're looking up, right? That's a good point, I guess. Yeah. But also, like, they look totally different from the environment. I find this NPC's dialogue particularly interesting because you, Ryan, have a great theory that this throws a massive wrench in. That all of the characters in the world of Final Fantasy are walking around it, but the way that they view the world is from our game perspective. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're like just to them, they naturally see things from a third-person point of above, above. Yeah. And that's how they need to get around the world. 
But this person's talking about how if you look down, then you notice where items are. But she's always looking down. But then later on, the same person is going, but if you look up, then you see what the world has to offer like well, late in the game. Spoilers. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. That does destroy my insane theory that all of the characters <laughs> see from top down. Just wanted everybody to know about that. <laughs> is how I know. Yeah, that's what I'm usually looking for is... Something smooth and textureless with a glint to it. <laughs> that looks nothing like <laughs> its surrounding. Take care of yourself. It's the law of the slums. That's the law? But it's written in the books. Take care of yourself. Well, you need weapons. It's a buy. We should get a Titan Bangle. Or, yeah. or, we should get a or Ford. Or get a few. So we buy some items from the first weapons store. Mm-hmm. And we walk over onto this area of the slums that is the most peaceful land imaginable. Yeah. There's like meadows and ponds and flowers, waterfalls. And yeah, like this is the only place where things grow. Wait a minute. Why does she need to go to the church to pick flowers? Her yard is yeah, full of them. There's tons of them over here. It- and this the change in scenery, I mean, like it's like imagining you were walking from literally a Mad Max world. And then you hung a left, and suddenly you're in the Shire. <laughs> Look at this background. Oh, man. There's yeah. a gem over it's there. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I just want to appreciate this for a second. This beautiful waterfall, and there's like piping that we built into the river cliff. And it's all sunny. I mean, I guess it's wherever Eris and her materia that does nothing goes, flowers I guess it would make sense that she was drawn to this spot, right? Mm -hmm. We can get into that (laughs) mindset, maybe? Yeah. Her DNA brought her here because of the ancient blood. So we finally make it to Eris' house. Mm -hmm. I'm home, Mom. I'm home, Ma. This is Cloud, my bodyguard. (laughs) Eris is like a (laughs) horrible construction worker. Let's see how that goes for a while. I like it. I'm glad you like it, Jeff, because it's about to ruin your voice. You're about to really like it. (laughs) I'm all right. I had Cloud with me. (laughs) Yeah. I wish we had this last night. Elmira is her mom's name? Uh Uh-huh, I guess. So what are you going to do now? (laughs) Is Sector 7 far from here? I want to go to Tifa's bar. I got some unfinished business. Tifa a goil? (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna bring the paper towels in their blood. Is Tifa a girl? Yeah, Eris is like, I didn't see a ring on your finger. <laughs> a girl friend? Girlfriend? He's like, no, that's gross. Should I say no way or yeah, that's right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I would say no way. I don't think so. So far, we keep referring to ourselves as like, childhood friends and everybody around us is going like sure yeah childhood childhood friends friends. well let's keep up the ruse sure (laughs) 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 yeah she's so you're single huh did it hurt when you fell from heaven (laughs) you don't have to did it hurt when you fell from the clouds yeah (laughs) cloud cloud (laughs) well that's nice let's see sector seven i'll show you the way You gotta be kidding. Why do you want to put yourself in danger again? You're just a flower girl. (laughs) I'm used to it. She's used to being in danger. It sounds like this girl has some kind of a death wish. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Maybe she'll get her wish. Well, don't know. Getting help from a girl. I'm too manly for that. Me with my flowing blue jumpsuit, long blonde hair. A goyle? What do you mean by that? Haley, girl, what do you mean by that? You, you expect me to just sit by and listen after hearing you say something like that? Ma! That's taking Cloud to Sector 7. I'll be back in a while. It's a lovely home. It's beautiful. But if you're gonna go, why don't you go tomorrow? It's getting late now. Yeah, you're right, Mom. <laughs> Eris, please go and make the bed. So Eris goes upstairs so we can have a private conversation with her mom, Mm -hmm. who's just like, you're trouble. You're trouble for my daughter, I know it. Yeah, basically. That glow in your eyes. You're from Soldier, right? I I love that it's like, the whole Mako, it makes you have that pregnant look. Like, you've got that glow (laughs) about you. I don't know how to say this, but would you please leave here tonight without telling Eris? (laughs) 
<laughs> but at least she came out right out and said it. This, but I'll just say it. I'll just fucking say it. I, I respect that. I'm gonna need you to ghost my daughter. <laughs> it's the only way. Soldier, the last thing Eris needs is to get her feelings hurt again. And I mean, if you think about it hard and long enough, ghosting will just be better for everyone involved. Too, hard enough and long enough. You know, because they, they don't want to, they'll just get mad you right. know, if you talk to them. You, they, that's not good for them. And, and you don't want to get mad at. They it's don't really want... the emotionally mature thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Who, wait, does that mean that she was like with some dude from Soldier? It could. Who broke her heart because he tried to kill her or something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember what happens, but I don't think it's that exactly. I don't think he tried to kill her. You need to go through the Sector 6 to get to Sector 7. Sector 6 is a little dangerous, so you better get some rest tonight. So we go to the room next to Eris's to, like, pretend to sleep uh -huh. so that we can sneak out in the middle of the night. This is a fun mechanic, because if you walk too close to her bedroom when you're sneaking out, she will come out and catch you. Oh, yeah. Is this an event sneaking up on us again? I think it might be considered an <laughs> this event. This part's so weird. <laughs> Seem pretty tired. Whoa. I haven't slept like a, in a bed like this in a long time. Wait, did Eris come slide into bed with us? What, in the middle I don't of the night? think so. So it's not... I haven't slept in a bed like this in a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is happening tonight? Ever since that time. Seven years ago? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Cloud <laughs> is, like, dozing off, and I guess he's remembering a time he was back home at his mother's house. Yeah, he's... Is it a memory or a dream? No, well, this is a memory. Right. I mean, okay. he could be dreaming the memory. The memory. I yeah. Guess. He's um, like laying on his <laughs> bed, and his mom is there <laughs> talking to him. Are memories of dreams memories, Jeff? Or well, is... Yes. Yes. Those are memories because they're memories of dreams, uh -huh. but they're not memories of like actual events. But they're memories that you carry. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My, how you've grown. Who is this? I'll bet the girls never you leave you alone. I'm worried about you. There are a lot of temptations in this city. Oh, this must be like before he went off to join Soldier. I'd feel a lot His better if you like... just settled down and had a nice girlfriend. Oh, this is Cloud's mom. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to settle down with a nice girlfriend. You should have an older girlfriend. One that'll take care of you. One that'll teach you the ways. <laughs> is Eris or Tifa supposed to be older than... I don't think they've specified that at all. Okay. I don't think yeah. that's the idea. I'm not interested. So Cloud wakes up from his dream in the bedroom next to Eris's. And he decides now's the time to sneak out. Sector 7 past Sector 6. I should be alright. Now that I know the window. Now that I know that now Sector that know 7, 7 is near Sector 6, six <laughs> I should be alright yeah. by myself. <laughs> it's totally clear. Come now. on. Can I go knock on her door? Yeah, maybe. Oh, shit. Trying to sneak by the room, Eris catches us. Yeah, what Cloud doesn't realize, because he can't see from the bird's eye view, this is more evidence against my <laughs> yeah, my theory, theory, is that uh, Eris stays up all night long sitting on the edge of her bed waiting for death. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you really have to sneak out quietly or she will bolt the door. Cloud, I, think, I thought the Turks came back. Get some rest. Get back in bed, Cloud. She caught me. Simple as that? Like, do I have to f figure out how to get past her? Can't get caught this time. Yeah, don't fuck it up this time, Jeff. I mean, all I did was, did I, was it because I ran? Oh, maybe. What if I not? <laughs> as I was going to make it past her room, I decided, you know what, let me just open her door. <laughs> Glad I thought I, the Turks came back. Get some rest. <laughs> Any time the door opens, she's like, oh my god, I thought I was about to be killed. <laughs> It's like I've told you about that experience I had in Peru. Maybe I'll tell this in voiceover mm -hmm. with the fireworks and yeah, that yeah, yeah. lady who thought the terrorists came back. Okay, so yeah, I worked at a free health clinic when in Peru when I was 18 years old for like a month. And there was this crazy night because like I wound up securing a little bit of weed for myself, which was the <laughs> cheapest weed I've ever purchased or ever will purchase. And I used to every night go up to like the rooftop and I would smoke a little bit and just like appreciate this insane city that I was in and kind of like the way that the mountains surrounded it and the cloud cover would come in and stuff. And one night I was up there and just in, across the entire city, just 
fireworks started going off like crazy. I had no idea what was happening or why, but it was the most beautiful and incredible experience I had ever had. And it was just like pew, 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 all over the city. And the thing about this town in Peru is like it's the original starting point for this horrible terrorist group called the Shining Path in the early 90s. And there was a woman that was living in the house with me who had left while the Shining Path were in power and had only recently come back now that like Shining Path is totally gone and like every other block there were military police to make sure that they never came back and all that. And she said that she had spent the night hiding under her desk because she was so scared because the fireworks sounded like machine gun fire and she thought that they had come back. And that's how you were able to get out of the house. That's how I was able to get out of the house. Right. <laughs> So that's what... Cloud needs some fucking fireworks. Yeah, Cloud needs fireworks, and then Eris would hide under the bed, and then he can get past her room. Yeah. That's why I told this story. This is why the walking speed is so slow, so that this moment is realistic. For the stealth. For the stealth. God, I hope there's not a ton of stealth. God, I hope there is. I don't is. remember that. I love, I love a good stealth game. Wait, you, maybe you went too close to her door? I must have gone too close. Yeah, that's it. I just have to walk... A little bit further away from her door. Keep the action going. That's what the. What I love about this is, yeah, like, I mean, at this point, wouldn't she be like, do I need to put a lock on your door, <laughs> Cloud? So we had like four or five failed attempts at leaving the house. Yeah, like every 15 minutes it, we could try it again. Because if you just walk too close to her door or you walk too fast or whatever, or she catches you. Or if you just choose you, to open it because you're that, being a dick. That too. But then, so you finally get out and you walk down the road a little ways and she catches up to you anyway. Right. It's like, why, what, why did this, this happen? This mechanic exists in service of, of what exactly? I don't know. What happens before she catches up to us is we raid her garden. Raid the garden. Covered material and an ether. So on our way out, we walk into somebody's house. This guy has a ton of shit to say. Yeah. Everything President Shinra says is a lie. How do you know? But then again, you can't trust that avalanche or whatever you call them. You can bat it around all you like, but in the end, it comes down to wanting to be like those who live up above. I mean, this is like a guy who actually just cut right to the core of the problem. Mm -hmm. And the core of the problem of our current society right now, too. The president lies, but you can't trust that other group. You can't trust Shinra. And you, and can't, you can't trust Avalanche. And you can bat it around all you like, but at the end it comes down to wanting to live like those who are above. This game's nailing it out, out the gate. Who do you believe in? Oneself. Me. I never lie to myself. That's for sure. I actually believe this yeah, guy. Like he this seems guy. to not lie you know, to himself. He's got a lot of thoughts for just a random NPC in some room. Look how much detail they put into this nothing room. I know. Is, this, is this room really room nothing? Like... What's that poster on the wall of like a I karate man know, with a beard? He, he's awesome. It's like he's got his hands up. There's also a TV in this room. Yep, playing the news. And now for the news. Due to a terrorist attack by the group named Avalanche, Parts of Midgar that were temporarily out of power will be restored momentarily. Those of you who are in that area, who are watching this television, I don't know how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Following President Shinra's lead, Mayor Domino also spoke out against Avalanche. Spoke out public against Avalanche. Spoke out public. So President Shinra, Mayor Domino must just be the mayor. President well, yeah, Shinra. yeah. Do you think there's a governor between them? Well, I think President Shinra is president of, like, a company. Right. Like, I don't think he's officially... And he's, he's... not, like, elected president. I mean, President Shinra's obviously in more control of this city yeah, than Mayor, Mayor Domino. Yeah, yeah, Mayor yeah, Domino sure. sounds like a real puppet. Yeah. He I sounds think, like a domino that's gonna Shinra's fall. President Shinra's got this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, there's more to this place. There's a child... Turtles Paradise News, number one, for delicious wine with a nice ring to it. Stop by the Turtles Paradise. Oh, Turtles Paradise. Yeah, this is this is the first of a poorly conceived ad campaign that yes. we're going to see most of. The really poorly thought out. <laughs> yeah, they put this one in this kid's bedroom. Yeah, that's where one of six <laughs> flyers yeah. for the Turtles Paradise bar and grill yeah, well, we eventually will actually make it to the Turtles Paradise. But right now, we're seeing ads for it. A nice ring to the wine? That doesn't sound good. Oh, well, I want to go to Turtles Paradise. Yeah, me too. 
so I left Ares in the middle of the night, and, like, what they wanted me to do was, like, run around randomly and, like, go in all the rooms, right? Uh, yeah. Good. Because that's what I'm doing. We only trade items for Gil here. So the only thing that we do here is, like, trade items for money. We're all about it. I would love a store that said that to me. It's like a YouTube video. All we do here all day, 100% bro, trade items for money. Yeah, like, you bring in your cash, we'll give you the items. Yeah. But we only accept cash. <laughs> and, and credit, and, you know, like money, any though. money, though. Money. money. Do we, we need a patent? We, yeah, we don't have any. I don't care if it's scrap metal or materia, we can get anything here in the slums. <laughs> of these two of things. The, if it's, if it's two things that people throw away and seem to be on the ground yeah, everywhere. scrap metal and something that I've heard is so common that you just find it on the ground. Like, Cloud has been like, yeah, that shit's all over. So, this guy in the tube, though. I feel like this is a thing that I could never figure out. But I definitely, because you run into him at the beginning every time. What am I supposed to do? Go to Sector 7. Right. Which is where? Through Sector 6. Thank you. Where is Sector Try 6? Going to the left. This way? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi. Almost making it to the right sector, we run right into Eris. Yeah, we spent way too long in town just, like, talking to strangers. She had plenty of time to yep. hit us off at the pass. You're up bright and early. You have to go through the slum in Sector 6 to get to Tifa's 7th heaven. <laughs> I'll get you there, come on. And call it that because she's only got seven fingers. <laughs> also, on that TV in the basement, they're always playing that show, Seventh Heaven. <laughs> it's like the theme of the bar. They should make a sequel to Seventh Heaven, I was thinking the other day. Eighth Heaven? Or like their, their lives have all fallen apart. It's all like horrible. I don't remember, like, in the premise, what, what was the premise of that show? Well, the dad is a pastor and they're a family and they're just trying to be Christian and shit. Sure. They're trying to get to heaven. And there's seven of them. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think there are seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because then eight was enough. Eight was, seven yeah. was heaven, seven was but heaven. eight yeah. was enough. Exactly. Okay, uh, what is this hand that I'm on? Like, was this city a robot, a giant robot there's at one point? definitely pieces of robots around. The, the junk these slums seem to be built out of is as though, like, let's say that in a hundred years or whatever, humanity moves beyond cars. Mm -hmm. Like, all the cars get junked somewhere, and there's just junk cars everywhere. They, and we left them all yeah, over the Yeah, but we moved on to, like, giant robots or right. whatever. We, you know, we tried around. to clean them up, but the, all the car junk is still around. And uh -huh. then we got rid of the giant robots, and now there's giant robot junk on top of the car junk. And then we started, I don't know, flying around in jets, but right. then we got tired of the jets. And so now we the, crashed all the jets. It's like there's detritus from... <laughs> From layers of industrialization yeah, that are yeah. so mind-boggling to even consider. It's like, just leave that shit around now that we're <laughs> onto the other thing. We built the higher-up platform. Just throw it off the edge. Yeah, well, it's the whole theory of Midgar. It's like, well, the slums are fucked. Just build over it. Yeah. I'm gonna get into a fight any second. There it is. <laughs> Hell bomber. <laughs> it's a house. That just sent, like, an ICBM at me. It's, yeah, it's like a gingerbread house. Here it is again. Where it opens up its roof and, and sends a nuclear, nuclear bomb. bomb on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember the battle animations in this being, like, half of the enjoyment. Nice to meet you. Can you go down that, uh, like that thing? Oh, like, oh. Look at, okay. <laughs> you know, it just, it takes a little bit, and yeah, then, like, I mean, I'm, it'll be second nature by the end of today. So in these battles, I find the first use for the all materia, mm -hmm. which, the way that works is you can pair it with another magic materia. Some of the slots are connected for your marbles, mm -hmm. and so if you connect something like fire with all, then you can cast fire on all the enemies instead of just one. So learning about that, I'm, I'm like, ooh, yeah, interesting. And it, and, it, and it also, like, is a system that as soon as you realize that there's, like, modifier materia, you kind of know in your head, like, this probably goes pretty deep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, ice all. I like, I like, ooh. So you can chain stuff around with the materia. Oh, yeah, like, is yeah. there a lot of that stuff, or yeah. is it just all? No, there's a lot of, dip. there's so much materia. Yeah, they are so fast, those little colons. So I think you, this is so confusing looking, but that board that's in the middle of the screen on the left, you what? can like run up that. Yeah. Like, really? You know, yeah. What? <laughs> 
Uh, when I was a kid, I think I spent like an hour in this map. Just being like running around yeah, and like winding up leveling. Anyway, we make it through Sector 6. Yeah, and we go to the, the most depressing playground ever. This is like one of those Russian playgrounds that you see pictures of. What? You you haven't seen these? Like, look up Soviet-era playgrounds that do still you mean exist. Like, do you mean like at Chernobyl? Or like, do you mean... Just like, you know, Russian oh, urban like decay. abandoned... Yeah, yeah okay, just like, no, I have seen those pictures, Not Russian specifically, right? it could yeah, be yeah, anywhere, yeah. but like <laughs> urban decay, there's a lot yeah. over there, I've heard. Yes. I've seen. The gate to Sector 7's in there. So we just went through Sector 6? Is that yeah, what that, that was? Yeah, that was Sector 6. That was just like a, a trash heap map with a like route through it for children. Yeah. Like, who like to play in junkyards. Thanks, <laughs> I guess this is goodbye. Oh no, whatever will I do? Isn't that what you want me to say? Take I'm gonna take her to Sector 7. I could do that, but I, won't I be in your way? What do you mean in the way? Nothing. Do you not pick up on sarcasm, Cloud? Can we take a break? We weren't together. Tinder moments the game. Is it tender moments or tinder moments? Tender. Well, this is also a tinder moment, I guess. Yeah. Let's just go to this park and just, like, what sit on the swing. What kind of horrible park this is? Like, ho I would be more terrified by this well, thing and going inside of that with its eyeballs. Like this. I think it's like this whole place used to what be What do you nice mean? Look at these mouths! No, but it was like a fun park and now it's in an industrial- it's like in a junkyard. I guess if it, if these had like, like colors on it, it they could the be junkyard. fun. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> I can't believe it's still here. My favorite slide. Cloud, over here. And the girls really don't leave him alone. Nope. So we sit up for a romantic enjoying of the slide and playground with yeah, Eris. It's like a real reflective, come sit with me, I'm going to tell you some inner things. Yeah, which Cloud's just up for. I, I really wish we could get Cloud's inner monologue through this part of the game, because what you learn later is right now, the things he can hold on to as reality <laughs> are so few yeah. that like being put in a situation like this where a girl is like, come sit with me, I'm into you, he's got to be going like, I don't even just act cool. <laughs> just act cool, yeah. <laughs> also, if you're wondering what the sound is in the background that's coming up, I'm pretty sure that the dishwasher is running and that's the draining noise of the water. <laughs> Well, I hope that doesn't last forever. What well, rank were you? Rank? You know, in soldier. Oh, I was... Don't say soldier. <laughs> don't say I was a soldier in soldier. That can't be rank. First class. First class? A likely story. Just the same as him. Who's him? Sephiroth? My dad? The same as who? It could be anything at this point. I know. When she's talking about her ex and knowing what we know about stories, we're like, we know it's something that relates to us. It yeah, has to it be. It has to, <laughs> but it doesn't. And also, we haven't even met who it is, so we're going like, is it one of the many thousands of characters we've already met? I know, yeah. No. It does relate to us, yeah, it but it's in a way, it's it's not the Luke, I am your father. No. That's not, we're in the wrong headspace. My voice boyfriend. I probably knew him. What was his name? It doesn't really matter. Holy it was this shit. weird, cool name. Is that? Wow. Chocobo <laughs> bringing an incredibly colorful huh? carriage. Hey, back there. Yeah, while we're sitting on the slide, what drives by but a chocobo dragging a carriage holding Tifa? Yeah, mercifully for Cloud before it can be revealed that he knows nothing about himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. A carriage shows up with Tifa on the back. And it's one of those like old timey, colorful, like wizard who's selling tonics kind of carriage. This carriage wouldn't be out of place like in a Studio Ghibli movie. Right. Like some guy rolls into, I don't, I don't I, not a specific movie, but it, it's like whimsical and old timey right. at the same time. And Tifa <laughs> leans out. Hey, everyone. Check. Oh, and it's driven by a chicken. <laughs> I think you're going to be very surprised by what this is. Tifa? Really? Tifa? Yeah, that's her. Okay. We gotta take his word for it, but... Alright. <laughs> that girl in the cut was Tifa? Where was she going? She looked kind of odd. She looked a little top-heavy. I'm gonna check what's in here. In this cool shed. Nothing. Nothing. 
You never know what's a door. Is this a door? No, in this game especially, I think we're going to have a hard time telling what doors are. So we enter the market part of town. Yeah, wall market. Town proper. Which is actually the first location in the game that, without knowing more about it, I'd actually kind of want to visit myself. Like, it has the (laughs) vibe of, like, urban but poor, like, night market with food and... Yeah, kind of like a less densely populated Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. And a little more, like, folksy. Like, the huts yeah. are made out of, like, yeah. I can't explain it. It well, looks it's like still a, garbage. But... It looks like even though it's tr- trash, it, you could have a fun time at Walmart. And... <laughs> <laughs> Just like Walmart. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, swanky slum market. Item. I would love to open a shop and Call call it item. item. Yeah. That would be the, a great name for a shop. All right, we do need item. This place is scary in a lot of ways, especially for a Goyle. So we've got to find Tifa fast. Wait, now she's a part of that? Or is she being sarcastic here? What? She's like, girls are... Oh, no, I think she's serious. This place that we're in here is... Is Is dangerous for girls. dangerous for girls, yeah. Yeah, Okay. Because this is a detour. They weren't going to come through here. Right, I saw Tifa on that. Right. We can go to the bathroom? Yeah, look at that. We can't enter it. It's too small to fit in. You have to walk, you have to climb over the toilet. Past the door. No shit buckets in this game. Yeah, real indoor plumbing, even in the slums. Lots of bathrooms. Oh, that would be so fucking awkward to deal with, and then to close the door, and then you're like, oh, now I'm in here. (laughs) The toilet at my work is like... Put installed so close to the wall that you have to sit like sideways on mm. it because there's not room because like, <laughs> you're like pressed against the wall. There, in New York, uh, there was a place that you would sit on the toilet and the sink was in your face. Oh, like God. it was like very tight. Beep bleep. Yeah, let's load up on potions. Hey boy, you sure got a good looking heifer there. Take her to the Don's place and you'll make a mint. Pretty immediately you learn that even though it looks like a place that might be fun to visit, mm. this is not a fun place. No. And that most of what goes on here is like sex trafficking. Well, if you love red light districts. If, yeah, if you're really, really into like sex tourism, mm-hmm. then this, <laughs> this is, is the place, place for, for you. you. But one thing that's happening like while Ryan is reading this line out is like I was getting myself a drink in the kitchen or something. So I was only half paying attention. So I walk back and I'm like, heifers are a hilarious thing to call a cow. I love people who call cows heifers, but he what also he called. Mean? Oh, I thought he called. He, I thought he meant. I, I did. I didn't. I wasn't looking at the screen. I thought he was talking <laughs> about a cow. I thought the there was a cow. To him and he I thought that. there was a cow. No, I didn't know that he was talking Paris. about women. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't love that. <laughs> Please come in. Here's a free pharmacy coupon. But wait, if, if you go to this place, you'll make a mint? Like, He's you'll like, sell take her to the Don's girl? place and sell her, you'll make a mint. Jesus Christ, the slums are terrible. Yeah, We're on the PlayStation now, you, man. This place is less functional of it. You're like, Jesus. how does this city work? And I'm like, it fucking doesn't, man. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go pee. Welcome, sit wherever you like. So there's a restaurant in town. Yeah. We go in, we don't have enough money for the food. But we sit down and order it anyway. This is one of the, like, we we won't be able to comment on all of them, but early on especially, I think it's worth it. Like, this whole diner full of people is just like a detail that has no real function. Is yeah, that I think you're, like, we're about to go into the kitchen. They have a kitchen area. It's like, just all thought You walk out. in and you can sit down and you can order three items. And people at the <laughs> diner are like, this place is, has good food. Yeah. I eat here a lot. and But that's it. It's just like a cool little place. Yes, what will you have? Green barbecue sushi plate or today's special? Oh, we're getting into foods. Hmm. Uh, let's get the Korean barbecue. Yeah, fucking love that stuff. 70 gil. There's no way we could make some kind of Korean barbecue thing Hey, happen. cancel that last order. I mean, I don't know how to make Korean barbecue. Well, because we don't have the, the group thing. Yeah, yeah. So even if we got the right meats, never mind. Excuse me, you can't come in here and order things without any money. Come again when you have money. Oh, because I spent it all on everything? Can you use the pharmacy coupon to buy some Korean barbecue? No, but that guy who's sick. Oh yeah, the pharmacy, duh. It's a cool diner. I bet they're quietly putting out some amazing food at this place, you know? Yeah, it's probably pretty good. It's like the guy in the slums who like really cares about food and does everything that he can with the little 
that he has. Okay. I'm actually gonna go make money. Yeah, you could also sell something. Because nah. we never sold like our early bangles. That'll probably give you enough for the food. That's enough true. to eat. Just gotta make enough scratch to eat, man. So we go on our first little mini grind. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, fight some houses for cash. Make enough money to eat. Oh my god, it became a bigger... Sh- it became a... Mo- like, it transformed... <laughs> yeah, there's like a rocket robot thing inside of the house. What the fuck? God. How do you draw something like this? Like, for this and have everybody go like... Oh yeah, like, look at that thing. No, we got a second uh, limit break, too. Oh, listen to the sounds of that Korean barbecue getting fried up. There you go, enjoy. Why did we eat that meal? Uh, we just wanted to. We wanted to so badly that we left to get money to come <laughs> back just to order it. And then we say that the food is all right, and then the guy inside gives us a pharmacy coupon, but I think the guy outside gave us a pharmacy coupon. I thought so, too. Do we have two pharmacy it's, coupons? I didn't think we did, no. I, but maybe we did. It's unclear. It's really unclear. I want to save this kid's life. Mm-hmm. He's sick and he's in a tube. So we run into somebody who's like, oh, he's like really biting his lip and going, I just can't decide, you know, in that shop over there, down to the right. The mm-hmm. shop is a whorehouse. It seems this like is the it. shop? <laughs> Your chief's childhood <laughs> friend, and you brought a new girlfriend to a place like this? <laughs> what kind of a guy are you? I don't know yet. I don't either. We're still... I still have no fucking idea, really. I don't know. What the hell, you fucking cunt bitch? This ain't no fucking shit show. I'm busy right now. Fuck you, jerk face. I feel like there's going to be a fight. Things are going to pop off. They're going to pop off, dude. This guy just can't go on. Shit's going to pop off. Oh. You looking for a girlfriend, too? You know a girl named Tifa? Hey, you're pretty fast. Tifa's our newest girl. Oh my god, why? But unfortunately, she's having an interview right now. Here at the Honey Bee Inn, it's, a, it's customary for all the new girls to be taken to Don Corneo's mansion. John Don Corneo. Don Corneo is a famous dilettante. <clears throat> now he wants to settle down and is in the market for a bride. Gross. I hope Don Cor- Cornelio, whatever, is like in a wheelchair and, and talks like that. You know, like he's like a... Honey uh, Bee Inn is a private club only members can go in. Shoo shoo. Hustler, what's his name? Oh, I don't remember that guy's name, but I know who you're talking about. Hustler wasn't his last name. It wasn't no. Stephen Hustler. No. Larry Flint. Yeah. Because the movie was The People vs. Larry Flint. When he talks like that, he's like got yeah, a crazy right. way of talking. Monster. And the tragedy is he can't feel anything below his waist. <laughs> and it's like a crazy irony because of the nature of his work. I'm Woody Harrelson, and I'm looking for an Oscar. Oh, we should probably mention here about that Honey Bee Inn, the brothel. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's a whole sequence where you can go in and see a bunch of stuff that's in there, which we unfortunately do miss. Yeah, we couldn't figure out how to get past the door. Yeah, so um, if you were hoping for us to find like the weird hot tub scene where it was Kate, you see Kate sit through a locked door God, or something. I'm so like, bummed we didn't see this. Yeah, it's pretty upsetting that we missed it, but I, you can look it up online. Like and come to did. think of it, I must have missed it every time I played this right. game. You yeah, because I, I had when we looked it up, I hadn't seen any of that imagery it, before. It's not vital, but it's <laughs> fascinating. So which one is the pharmacy? Um, this it's gotta be this. Yeah, with the pill up front. Oh, you have a coupon. Then please select any one of the medicines. So you can redeem your pharmacy coupon for one of three items. A disinfectant, a deodorant, or a digestive. Right, and our heads are still in the place of this guy are sick. Right, and the guy who are sick is like, ooh, ah, like his stomach is hurting, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So digestive, of course. Yeah, we are we haven't grokked yet that this is related to a different loop that we haven't started yet, Yeah, really. that's the beginning of another <laughs> loop. <laughs> a digestive, right? Because his stomach is broken, right? I think so. I mean, disinfectant he probably does need, and he definitely needs deodorant in that fucking tube. But I don't think that's going to fix his problem. It'll fix other problems that he has. Let's go see if it works. This is where they get to go more anime with all this shit. Oh, it's about to get so anime. Yeah, like with all of, yeah, the wind coming, yeah. Yeah. 
like just overdoing the summons, like where oh. you're like that starts here. picking up the earth <laughs> and throwing it at the yeah. bad guy, and then the earth crashes yeah. on him, and then oh, it all man, explodes, yes. and a like ice flies in, and needles slash them up, and then it's like a thousand damage. I think you're gonna be satisfied. Okay, great. Because we haven't seen a summon yet. No. All right, here's a digestif. Use the key item from the menu. We might be wrong about it. Go to the menu or item. Go to key items. At digestive. Doesn't seem like this is for him. But it said that he was sick. Yeah. And it can't be deodorant or disinfectant. That doesn't cure whatever some would make somebody go ooh ah. No. We don't know it yet, but what this guy really needs is his genes resequenced. Yeah, yeah. We need the CRISPR <laughs> to get in here. Yeah. That's not the answer to that. Well, that sucks. What is that the answer to, if not that? There's a sick guy. We went to the pharmacy. We picked up some medicine. What the... F- like, what the fuck? I mean, but... We could have picked up other stuff that wasn't medicine at the pharmacy, too, so it could be related to a whole other thing. And we were just assuming digestion was his problem. I mean, he could just be in pain. Yeah, he but could... my assumption also is that, like, his pain... I'm just saying our, that he our assumptions were wrong, obviously. Obviously, you're right, but... <laughs> I'm, look, I'm just making my arguments. No, no, I'm, I really thought that might work. Uh, now I'm worried, should we have gotten something else? Not the digestive? Well, it's a little late it for that. It is too late, yeah. Okay, good looking heifer, blah blah blah. What is happening in here? There is so much going on in Wall Market. I know, it's real. That's what I meant. Like, it's not a nice place to be, but it's alive, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> so we walk into the gym. Doing squats. There's squats in the boxing ring? It's a gym. They're training, bro. They're training, they're training bro. All right. Try to stop saying bro. No, keep it, keep it going. Wait again. Keep it fucking going. What's the difference between a bangle and an arm one? I don't know. This one's better than this one. I'm not up on my jewelry. Metal knuck? Equip it, good. Yeah. The Final Fantasy Devo mashup video. Equip it. <laughs> Equip it, good. Equip it, good. When a problem comes along, you equip it. Woo, times are bad, this guy says. And then... And then mm, mm, oh, really? It was the worst of times, and also it was the worst of times. Oh, this guy has to pee. <laughs> hey, could you do something for me? Someone's been in there all day, and they, they're not coming out. I can't hold it anymore. Wait, can I help him by getting either getting him another bathroom or getting somebody out of there? Someone's in here. What is he? What are they doing in there? Is there two people in there? Is he just peeing? Um, like covering his face. It down. looks like he's like standing in front of the toilet, like he's trying to pee, like with his hand on the wall, going like, oh, "I just won't." Yeah. I have yeah. a urinary infection. I guess I was over at that whorehouse, <laughs> and now it fucking hurts. Okay. So it turns out you can help this guy. We didn't. No, but we'll get into that next week when we really fall into this loop. Mm-hmm. This is the mansion of Don Corneo, mm. the most powerful man in oh, Wall Market. That's the name of this place. You were curious. Wall Market. Here's Wall Market. Because it's not Wall Street. Or Walmart. It's Wall Market. Right. The, not it's not K Market over here. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have standards. There's this fucking ceiling fan hanging from the sky. <laughs> yeah, where is this? Is it outside? Yeah. What the fuck? How is it Well, that's there? what I was saying, is we're never really outside in the slums. Uh, right, like, right. But they have ceiling like... fan? Whatever. This is almost like back in the first game when we were going down into the bottom of dungeons and going, it's a room full of houses. Like, right. It's fully a room, but it is outdoors, but there's also houses. It's, yeah, it's a structure on a scale that I don't think we can, like, have a real world comparison to. Yeah. Um, but nobody looks up. Yeah, you know what this game really needs, just for our understanding, is, like, someone needs to look up and the camera needs to pan and show us what it looks like above them. I think there's a shot later on that kind of does it, but it's just like, it would be great to just fully establish and yeah, root I, ourselves I, 
thousand agree, the reality because, of it like, here. this fan, where is this fan it's connected It's a ceiling to? fan connected to something mile up. Do you think it's just hanging from like, a cable? From a cable, like, all yes. the way down? I do. <laughs> Look, the Don's not into men, so don't let me catch you around here again. Oh, you got another cute one with you. Hey, this looks like the Don's mansion. Yeah, that's what he just said. I'll go take a look. I'll, I'll tell Tifa about you. You do know what kind of place this is, don't you? Then what do you want me to do? You want to go in with me? Well, being a man, that'll be pretty hard. If you get my meaning. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Besides, if I bust in there, <laughs> it'll cause too much commotion. But I can't just let you go in alone. I thought that Cloud didn't care about nobody but money. He's a confused boy. He's a confused boy. First, we need to find out if Tifa's all right. Is she eating a sandwich over there? Oh, she's What's laughing. so funny, Iris? <laughs> yeah, is she eating a sandwich? Cloud, Cloud, why don't you dress up like a goyle? It's the only way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, I remember now. We probably wanted to get the deodorant, not the digestive. <laughs> Good God. But we didn't know that this was going to happen. No, we didn't. Just wait. I've got a, another Two friend friends. or something. Eris, I can't. I'm a guy. I'm all muscly. There's nothing feminine about me at all. Right. I also love it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, nothing at all feminine about this fucking... My long, slender arm. Yeah. <laughs> my, my beautiful, billowing, flowing, my billowing. golden hair. <laughs> but I do like that this whole thing, he was like, this isn't a mission for a girl. And it's like, it's a mission that's only for a girl. Mm-hmm. You are worried about Tifa, aren't you? Well, then come on, hurry. Yeah, the deodorant would help. Anything that looks like a dress. What if we just convince them that, like, times are changing and that <laughs> women don't have to dress like oh, that? Yeah. And look at me, I'm Cloud, I'm a woman. <laughs> So that's where we're going to leave season four, episode two. Mm-hmm. We, we've we got our new goal of we got to get into this mansion, Don Corneo's mansion. Yeah, we're going to have to get all of the uh, accessories we need to mm-hmm. pass as a woman so that we can go apply for a job at the brothel. <laughs> that's what's going to happen next week. <laughs> And that's where we're going to leave it for now. Oh, let's uh, go into the live stream, see if anybody sent us any messages. Yeah, are you ready to dissolve your ego and um, take on the mantle of somebody else's cause? Let's do it. Let's go. All right, hit the button. I do really love it in here. It's such a calming experience. Why don't we just live in here? I mean, it's, I wouldn't want to stay here forever. <laughs> oh, look. I feel like I can taste our message coming towards us. The, uh, mm, mm, mm. What's it taste like, Jeff? It tastes like the words. Do you like classic Nintendo games, exploring fantasy worlds, and solving puzzle dungeons? Do you wish you could design your own adventures in those classic games and then go on them with your friends? Then check out Reclaim the Wild at reclaimthewild.net. Reclaim the Wild is an unofficial Legend of Zelda tabletop role-playing game system based on the Breath of the Wild and inspired by all the other Zelda games. With this free tabletop RPG system, you can create new stories in worlds and times of Zelda games, new and old, or build your own version of Hyrule to explore. Reclaim the Wild features open-ended character creation and growth, so you can't ruin a character with a single bad choice. Combat is quick and active, and enemies have strategic weaknesses that you'll want to exploit. Reclaim the Wild also features a comprehensive crafting system, so you can craft tons of useful items. With the also free expansion book, you can also build houses, cannons, shops, and even castles. And the bestiary includes over 100 different foes from Zelda games new and old, ready to fight would-be heroes. If you're interested, take a walk in the woods to reclaimthewild.net. There you can download the PDF rulebooks and join our Discord channel to ask questions of developers and other players. That's reclaimthewild.net. Oh my god, I want to run a game of this so badly. This sounds so, really such a great idea. Check this out. I really I really want to check this out. Uh, yeah, you should all you should all go do that. Maybe your gaming group needs a new game to check out. 
Yeah, whoa, they're in version 1.03 at this point of their tabletop role-playing game system. Get in at the beginning, before that, like, fourth edition bullshit happens. Yeah, the- <laughs> this this really looks awesome. Thank you so much to Michael Schroeder for that message. Yes, thank you. Let's get out of this live stream. Hit, hit the button. And we're back. If you're interested in a live stream message, they're $25 a piece. Just email nocatpodcast at gmail.com. That's N-O-C-K-A-T with the subject line live stream, and we'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. Your message helps us keep the show going. And with that, let's end the show. Please rate and review us on iTunes. We love reading your reviews. Get in touch with us at nocatpodcast at gmail.com. That's N-O-C-K-A-T. Also, at nocatpodcast on Facebook and Twitter. Mm Mm-hmm. Check us out on Patreon if you want the video version or free t-shirt, patreon.com slash nocat. And with that, here's a little no one can know about this dessert. Coming in right for you. Games at the Grass Valley Lodge. There's a variety of board games, card games, and puzzles suitable for both adults and children available for your use. Games such as... I don't see Final Fantasy on here. I see Monopoly, Jenga, Uno, Clue... Yahtzee, Pet Detectives, is that the Ace Ventura game? What if this season we do mini games? <laughs> that sounds... man. <laughs> no, no. Mini games, like Jenga. Listen to us go, oh, 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 wow. Right. They listed Rummy, Hearts, Crazy Eights, and playing cards. <laughs> really getting their money's worth <laughs> Like, why not go for the mall? You've got poker yeah. there, you've got blackjack, you've got uh, war. 